let's take a look at chapters 7 and chapters 8. So if I go to Analyze Legal Reasoning for chapter 8 or 7, let's take a look at that. And the first question um, in this chapter is Camille worked at a small local college. She installs software on her computer at work that allows her to download television shows and movies from sites such as Netflix and Hulu. She burns these onto DVDs and sells them to friends and colleagues at the university. The university's ISP learns of the violation and sends a letter to the university. Camille intercepts the letter and continues to sell her DVDs. No further actions taken. When Universal Studios learns that its movies are being sold to Camille, it sues for ISP copyright infringement. What is the result? Um, in this case, ISP should have done something about it, so they are liable for the copyright. They kind of let it go and didn't follow up on it, and so that's the issue here. So if they thought something was happening, they need to do more than just send a letter. Um, Taylor Swift is a plumber in Montana and starts his own business, Taylor Swift Plumbing. He registers the domain name www.taylorswift2ts.net for his business. His site gets a great deal of traffic because it's often confused with the site for the singer. Taylor Swift. When Taylor Swift fans type her name into a search engine such as Google, Taylor Swift's plumbing site comes up among other results. When Taylor Swift's lawyers become aware of the situation, they sue Taylor Swift under the Anti-Cyber Squatting Consumer Protection Act which of the following is true. Taylor Swift is clearly not guilty um, because there's no bad faith intent. So he didn't do anything wrong. It's his name. Can't help it. The third one. Um, Jeremy is fired from his job at a local art gallery. He is angry about the firing and begins to talk about his former employer in a series of Facebook posts. He states that the gallery is a shoddy is shoddy and does not deserve some of the valuable pieces in its collection. He notes that the gallery should be careful because he knows all the holes in its security system. He states, I think someone should relieve them of their good stuff and sell it to a real gallery. I think that someone should be me. A few months later, Jeremy, after Jeremy's firing and shortly after his late post, last post regarding the gallery, the gallery is robbed of some of its most valuable pieces. The police arrest Jeremy for the crime, which is correct. Um, so in this case, Jeremy's post may be held evidence that he robbed the gallery. So that's why I'm always very careful about what I post on Facebook. You never know um, how something might be interpreted or how it might become come back to haunt you. I mean, think about if you're in a car accident, but you've posted several times that you hate slow drivers. Um, how might they use that in a court case um, to show that maybe you were a bad driver, even in that case you weren't? Um, they could still use that against you. So be real careful what you post on Facebook. Um, Ellen has a company-issued phone that she often places on her desk while she works. She's usually careful to take it with her wherever she leaves her desk. One day she goes to lunch forgetting to take the phone. Keenan picks up the phone, puts it in his pocket, and does not return it to Ellen. Keenan has probably committed the crime of what? Um, and in this case, it's going to be larceny. All right, criminal law number two. The police have been investigating burglaries in a neighborhood for the last year and have had Ronald under surveillance because they believe he's the burglar. Based on recent credible information about the informant, the police have reason to believe Ronald has a number of stolen goods in his home. Before entering Ronald's home, the police must first have what? Um, and preponderance of evidence is a torch, so that's not it. Double jeopardy is when you have to testify kind of against yourself, so that's not going to happen. Um, so it's either probable cause or search warrant. Um, they should have probable cause in order to get the search warrant, right? Otherwise, it's hard to get a search warrant. Number three. Pat is working undercover police officer to eliminate the sale of illegal drugs in a certain neighborhood as he's pretending to new to, to be new in the area, he asks Jeff, his neighbor, to help him buy drugs. Jeff finds someone who is selling drugs and takes Pat to buy them. At the drug buy, Jeff is arrested for helping to sell drugs. He can use the defense of entrapment in this case because he was asked to go do something. Generally, Pat's not the one they're looking for, so I'm not sure why that would happen, but um, he can definitely use that as a defense. Um, Tim gives Senator Wilson $100,000 so that Senator Wilson will make sure the federal government buys all its paper clips from Tim's company. Tim has oh, committed a, the crime of bribery. Oh, 
<sighs> Bribing government officials. Okay. Number five, customers of a major department store have signed up for the store's perks reward program. Receive an email that appears to be from the store. It states that there has been changes to the program policy and asks the recipients to click on the link to review the new information and verify personal data so that they can continue to receive program benefits. The website is fake and the data entered by customers is collected by cyber criminals who sell it to a third party. They are victim of phishing and not the good kind that happens during the summer. Number six, Luke and his younger brother Matthew have been robbed several have robbed several stores. When they attempted to rob Al's Deli, Al shoots Matthew in the foot. Matthew is then caught and arrested. Luke continues committing crimes, and Matthew is offered immunity in return to testifying against his brother. If Matthew accepts, um, his testimony will not be used against him. Um, but he is certainly not immune for prosecution for five years. So, first one. Number seven, Ruben owns a bicycle store. He often leaves Ed in charge of the store. One Saturday evening after Ed has left the store, Ruben discovers that he is missing $9,000 from the register. If Ed took the cash, he could be found guilty of the crime of what? Um, in this case, it would be embezzlement. There's another one I had to read again. What was I reading? <laughs> There's a lot of questions. While walking through the food court in the mall, Jason accidentally slips on a wet spot on the floor from a spilled drink. In the process of falling, his right arm flails behind him and hits Jenny sitting at a table as she's eating, knocking her unconscious. Jason, Jason will be charged with what? No crime other than maybe losing his balance. Number nine. Kayla advertises on the radio that she has a cream that is guaranteed to grow hair. Kayla knows that the cream is nothing more than the mineral oil and will not do what she claims it will. Kayla may be tried for, certainly not embezzlement. Um, I believe it's a federal crime of wire fraud. So anytime you do something on the radio, um, it and it's unlawful, that's where you can get wire fraud. Um, sometimes you can also get wire fraud if it is in the post box too. So um, there's a lot of federal crimes that can happen if you mail something as well. Ellen is the defendant in a jury trial of the 12 members of the jury, 10 found in favor of the plaintiff, while two found in favor of Ellen. As a result, the final verdict was in favor of Ellen. Based on this one, can assume the case was a Certainly couldn't tell if it was cybercrime or wire fraud. So it's basically, is it a civil case or is it a criminal case? And in this case, it would be criminal. And the reason I know this is because you need all of the members to find in favor of one um, to be found guilty. So she wins if two do not see her as guilty. And that is the end of those two chapters. Have a great week.